Three months ago, I came to you and talked about how what NVIDIA just did, I thought I'd never see again. And while NVIDIA didn't quite surprise me the way that it did three months ago, the company reported earnings after the market closed today that were no less impressive. Um, so what happened with the company? What does it mean for shareholders? We'll spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. My name is Brian Stoffel. At the time of this recording, I do not own shares of NVIDIA, although you can Sure bet. I wish I did based on what the stock has done. And I want to give a shout out to finchat.io for sponsoring today's video. We'll hear more from them in just a minute. So this was the first quarter. It's a little bit confusing. The first quarter of fiscal 2025 for NVIDIA. This is ending April 30th. Um, it will increase from $2.3 trillion when the market opens tomorrow, but that's where it was on the market close. So let's start with the top line. Revenue was up. 262%. That's right. This is a $2 trillion plus company growing its top line by 260% plus. Wow. Uh, it beat Wall Street's estimates. It beat the midpoint of management's guidance. Earnings per share exploded. What I thought was really interesting was management guided to a midpoint of non-GAAP operating income of $16 billion dollars came in at 18 billion plus. So that was a beat there as well. On the margins, non-gap basis, a lot to like. Gross margins expanded by a ton. Operating margins, I mean, reached the level that's just silly. I mean, it's insane. And the same thing with net margins. We've got a semiconductor that's got net margins of over 50%. We're, we're in a new world here. Free cash flow went from 2.6 billion to 15 billion. Net income followed the exact same dynamics. Balance sheet is in spectacular shape. Let's go down the income statement to just see how all this happened. You got revenue almost quadrupling. The cost of it was only up only 122%, but when you grow this fast, cost of revenue goes up that much, you get gross profit that more than quadruples. <clears throat> Excuse me. Operating expenses were only up 39%, tripling near quadrupling of revenue and operating expenses only up 39%. That's how you get this nice trick right here of almost an 8X in operating income, uh, more than a 7X in net income. Diluted shares outstanding was pretty much flat from year to year. And the company also announced that it will have a 10 for one stock split coming at the beginning of June. Let's dig under and see where this strength came from and should be no surprise why the stock is up after earnings. Now for this, we're going to go to finchat.io. This is a tool you can try for free if you click the link in the show notes below. If you want all the functionality that I'm about to show you, then you can get a subscription for 15% off by using that link. So head on over to finchat.io. I type in NVIDIA right here in the toolbar and we get the company's page. Now you've already got access to the a uh, conference call and transcripts that just ended. So that's pretty awesome. But my favorite part is this part right here, segments and KPIs. Because look at this, it's already filled in. The company just came out with earnings a couple hours ago. And here's what I want to show you. AI is the name of the game with NVIDIA. That should be no surprise. For a long time, it was actually gaming. That's this blue area right here. And you see for for a whole bunch of the company's recent history since the pandemic started, gaming was the main driver. And that didn't change until the middle of 2022. And then once ChatGPT was released, it was just like we're in a totally different universe. And this green is the data center revenue. And what's important is, is we see that it brought in $4.3 billion in data center revenue in the year ago period. Oh, that was just $22.6 billion in this quarter. And to just kind of give you a perception of that, we are looking at revenue growth that is still accelerating up 427% for data center revenue growth. That's pretty impressive. Uh, going to the rest of, the, uh, of, of what we found out, Management is saying that they believe that there is going to be continued demand for that data center revenue. And so the midpoint of their guidance calls for at least a doubling in revenue, which is better than Wall Street was estimating. Doesn't blow Wall Street's estimates out of the park the same way it did before. But I mean, 
come on, you really can't complain about numbers like this. And earnings per share are supposed to, uh, supposed to go up by a lot. I would not be surprised to see Wall Street revise their estimates upwards, but they were calling for 85% growth in the current year. Again, wouldn't be surprised to see that go up. So what should investors watch moving forward? Well, first is that revenue, but second is specifically that data center revenue. Third, keep an eye on gross margins. Why? Because if you've got such a huge opportunity in front of you, you got to believe that other players in the industry like AMD are going to be thinking, boy, we need a piece of this action. And if they come out with a good enough product that is cheaper than what NVIDIA is offering, then that might cause prices to go down. Although it certainly doesn't look like that's going to happen in the near, near term, but this is where it'll show up first. And then the last thing is just the capital return because the company has a ridiculous balance sheet right now and you want to keep your eyes on that capital return. They did announce a slight increase to their dividend along with that stock split, but still that's a very, very small piece of the pie right now given the stock price. Um, don't own this stock, so I'm not going to say, you know, where's the moat going or the thesis is on track, but it scores phenomenally well on both Brian Feroldi's checklist and my anti-fragile score. And then we've got to ask ourselves, well, where is this company? I actually think it's in stage four or stage five. And so for valuation's sake, which is a huge part of this now, let's head on over to finchat.io. And what I pulled up here is the company's forward, not backwards looking because when you're growing by triple digits you want to look forward not backwards so this right here is the company's forward pe ratio despite this ridiculous growth its forward pe ratio is 37 which isn't cheap but i mean that's not that bad at all and if we look at the company's uh forward price to free cash flow ratio of 43 again that's not cheap but it's certainly not ridiculously expensive either what about if we did a reverse discounted cash flow analysis? Well, for that, we just put in the company's ticker symbol right here, NVDA. We put in their trailing 12 month free cash flow, which is $39,334,000,000. Now I'll give them high growth, but because the semiconductor industry is highly cyclical, I would demand a 12% return for my discount rate. And so the question is, how fast does this free cash flow have to grow moving forward to justify a stock price of, we'll put it at a thousand. And the answer is, let's play with it until it matches. Not 25, maybe more like, oops, that's a mistake. Maybe more like 30%. No, maybe more like 27%. Mm, if I fix that, um, maybe 28%. All right, so basically what we're looking at is, 27 to 28% growth in free cash flow per year over the next 10 years. No matter what way you cut it, that is a high bar to clear. What do analysts think is going to be coming up? Again, if you use finchat.io, you can look at this. We go to analysis and we go to estimates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on free cash flow and say, show me the percentage change that you expect. So they do expect a doubling when it comes to the end of this fiscal year. So, you know, what was the growth? 27, 28%. If you're doubling, that's pretty low bar, but expected to drop down to about 28 or 27% by the year after. Now, these are just estimates, so who knows what they mean. The bigger story to me when it comes to NVIDIA is the fact that it remains the perfect company in the perfect spot in the middle of the perfect wave for investors. The question is, is how long is the wave going to last? That's what literally it all boils down to. So that is going to be the thing to keep your eye on. And I really do believe that the combination of revenue growth and gross margins will let you know how long that wave will be lasting. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with uh, news on this channel. Let me know what you think of NVIDIA's earnings in the comments section below. And one last uh, show note is the fact that this Channel was started a number of years ago by Brian Feroldi and I. He already had a YouTube channel, so he did it under his name. However, with all the videos that I've been doing recently, we are just rebranding to Long Term Mindset on July 1st. So this is what you'll see, but all the content will roughly be just about the same. Just wanted to let you know for when that pops up. So we'll check back in on NVIDIA in 90 days. For those of you who own shares, congratulations. You're in good shape. Until then, Brian.